Sitting snugly between buildings on Cork's South Terrace is the city's Jewish synagogue, home to Cork's Hebrew congregation for over 130 years. Its facade is a familiar sight to the thousands who pass its doors every day, yet few know of what lies behind its walls, its history and the rich contribution its congregation has made to the city. Not so Fred Rosal. For him, over the past 86 years, from boy to man, it's been home from home. It's uh, traditional to the extent that the uh, Ark of the Covenant is here and where we keep the scrolls of the law. Uh, they're the first few words of each of the Ten Commandments up there without going into depth about anything. This is the perpetual light, which is uh, the light that was over the temple. It burns 24-7, uh, a memorial light for the destruction of the temple. This is the platform of what we call the Bima, B-I-M-A-H, where we take the scrolls from the Ark of the Covenant, open them and read them on the, on the uh, platform on the Bima. These three steps up are traditional to the extent uh, it's you go up to Jerusalem, you go up to the law, that's where the law is. So you one, two, three. Ladies' gallery is upstairs. Um, everybody has their family pew. Our pew was here, the row sill seats where we sat. And my mother and my sister sat up there. So they could keep an eye on us. Uh, the ladies' gallery each have their name printed a little tab on the... Uh, there's only five or seven of them left in perfect condition. And they all have their, have their seats up there. I remember as a kid, this place used to be packed. Packed to the doors. As a boy, we couldn't even get into the family pew. We'd have to stand in the back for half an hour and hope somebody would leave to come in. My father saw Cork burn from... Uh, Patrick Street. He was in Patrick Street the night of the burning of Cork. He escaped over. At its peak, Cork's Jewish community was made up of 65 families. Today, Fred, his daughter Claire and her two children are the last descendants of those original Lithuanian Jews who, fleeing persecution in the 1880s, settled in Cork. Many of them setting up home here at Hibernian Buildings, or Jewtown as it became known locally and in those early days making their living as peddlers or viclamen. Peddle anything, pots and pans, even religious pictures, even, even clothing and blankets, like a door to door, never, never, uh, weeklies. In, in, in Yiddish they call it the vikla. Vikla means weekly. They were the viclamen. The Lithuanian people were poor. So you had poor Jews, poor Catholics. You had ill-educated Jews, ill-educated Catholics. So they bonded together, they had something in common. They both had nothing. Fred's granduncle Ernest was among the first of the community to arrive in Cork. A piano tuner by profession, he ran a successful music shop in the city centre. Fred's father Harry was just 12 years old when he and his baby sister May came to live with their uncle in Ireland. Cork, at the turn of the 20th century, excluded minorities from certain professions and certain clubs. But by the time Fred was growing up in the 1930s, that prejudice, he says, had all but disappeared. The, the brothers were very, very understanding. We didn't go to school on the Sabbath, which was Saturday morning. Praise was on three hours on Saturday morning. And uh, we went to synagogue. We met our friends after synagogue and they'd hand us the the lessons that we were supposed to do, and we were totally accepted. But many of Fred's contemporaries emigrated, and so began the slow decline of Cork's Jewish community. I, I have no contemporaries. They're gone. I, I'm here because I changed from medicine. When I was a young man, I suddenly decided that after three years, and the death of my mother, I didn't want to carry on with medicine and I walked out and that's why I'm here. Every other friend of mine who grew up with me is all over the world and I'm the only one left. 
As such, we have no members left. We must have 10 men over the age of 13 years of age to have a proper service. We haven't got that. Last December, members of the Jewish community from far and wide gathered at Shalom Park in Jewtown for a very special Hanukkah ceremony. It is also a pleasure to welcome here today Cork-born Rabbi Edward Jackson, now resident in Israel, and our other guests who have travelled here to take part in this moment and reconnect with their Cork roots. Among those gathered, Fred's grandson Daniel. He too, Fred accepts, will one day head abroad, and more than likely, just like those before him, never to return. But today, he's here with his grandfather in their synagogue. Um, this area is the Ark of the Covenant um, in the synagogue. We'd have about five um, Torah scrolls here, such as this one. Um, they would have taken about a year to write by a dedicated scribe, and they come from, some of them come from Central Europe. I would have learned how to read the text, but it is quite intricate, detailed text, almost like the Book of Kells. It's not in a very um, common, everyday script. I have the register of the Burial Society, um, also going back to the same area, 1891, also given to me. And, uh, when the Jewish community arrives, the important thing is to have a cemetery, not a synagogue. One of, one of the jobs I, I felt I had to do was to protect the cemetery forever. So with the help of the Cork County Council, that has been done legally. And they are looking after it wonderfully and it will be there forever. And um, I feel very happy about that. For years, for over 80 years, I worshipped in that synagogue in South Terrace. I have very, very nice memories of a boy and friends and marriages and births and happy occasions and even sad occasions. It's sad because it's the only synagogue I know. I tried. I spent the last 18 months maybe traveling a bit. I had a personal tragedy in the passing of my wife and I thought maybe I'd move out and maybe I'd settle for the last couple of years in places. I tried and I found myself a stranger in London, I found my stranger in, in Tel Aviv, I found myself a stranger in Miami and I said there's only one place. I was born and bred here and I'm an Irishman, a Corkman and a Jew.